Real Agriculture Soybean School is brought to you by Basic Seeds and Lollamond Plant Care. Joining us here on Real Agriculture, we're pleased to welcome Seth Nave, soybean agronomist with the University of Minnesota. And when we talk about soybeans and, and stresses to this crop, Seth, when is the crop most vulnerable to, to stress through the growing season? Yeah, it's a great question. So this is one of the things I'm going to talk about today. So we, uh, this is really relatively unknown. We know very clearly where corn is sensitive, where winter cereals are sensitive much earlier in their life cycle. Soybeans are really sensitive around the end. So in Minnesota, I'm sure the same way here, we talk about soybeans responding to environments, good environments in August. And really it's that last couple of weeks in August is really the most um, critical time for soybeans when they respond um, to negatively to stresses. So that's when we really need to keep the soybean supported and, and make sure within our power to, to do the best we can to support that crop. So what are some examples of, of stressors that we're talking about when we in this context? Well, it could be anything. We did, uh, in our research, we use light stress because it's something that we could basically stress the plant for energy. And it covers a lot of bases and it doesn't have as many interactions with other things. We could, it could actually simulate drought stress and some other stresses by looking at, um, by looking at drought stress. So it's, it's a little bit innocuous. So that's what we did from a research perspective. But we think it also is relevant for things like drought stress, uh, defoliation, other kinds of nematode or insect stresses and those kinds of disease stress, of course. So when we talk about uh, the impact of stress or being vulnerable, how do you measure that? Do you look at yield, the impact of the timing correlated with yield, or, or how, what was your metric for measuring? That's exactly right. We just looked at yield. So we were able to basically deploy some shades over these plants. Instead of moving those every 10 days, we moved them after a certain amount of light was intercepted, so a quantum amount of light. Um, and so that took a certain amount of energy out of that system at various times through the season. So we could say... By removing X amount of energy, this is how much yield was lost at each of these times. There's been some other studies that have looked at this, and they've looked at seed number and basically said seed number equals seed yield, so we don't need to look at anything more than seed number, but we actually looked at yield and then the yield components. So we learned a lot about how soybean balances stresses with compensating seed number for seed size. And so we had, as we reduce seed number, as we, as, we, as we move through the season and, and stress the plant later and later, it reduces the seed number. But through the very, all the beginning of the season, we had increased seed size all through that time period. So all the way through R4, so you know the beginning of August, the soybean was able to compensate for any reduction in seed number by just increasing seed size. And then after that, they were both present, and then we lost our yield. So that was the problem. That's why we have this really late stress. Corn is, you know, different because it's most sensitive during pollination and seed set. Seed number equals seed yield in corn, but in soybeans, seed yield does not equal seed number. And I would argue with all of these people that say we have to maintain pods, we have to keep flowers on our plants, we need four seeded pods. It's all malarkey as our past president would say. And um, so I, I don't think that's important. At least in our experiments, we did not find any sink limited yields. That's what the agronomists would call it. It was all source limited all the way up to 100 bushel per acre. So we've, and it's been my notion all along. And so this supported my preconceived notion. So I'm going to stick with it. So it's it's a really about pod fill again, just like on the, on the yield creation side of things also on the yield deficit side of things or, or detrimental impact side of things absolutely so uh, even if we have and that's part of probably why we think a soybean is such a resilient plant is is it's able to just even if it's short and stubby if it got hailed early on if it had all these other problems if we have the right kind of conditions during that late season it's able to just make really big seeds and those are enough to compensate for a very large portion of our loss of seed number. 
So it is planting dates still an important consideration then trying to plant them as early as possible? Yeah, so we've been doing a lot of work with planting dates and so we did some work in northern Minnesota so I thought maybe that would be relevant for here. I don't know if it is or not. But we're also doing a lot of modeling and um, I think the important, if there's one take home from our work, it really shows that, and this kind of is in tied to my talk today about stress, is that if we have a stressful environment at all later in the season, we don't get a benefit from early planting. So early planting doesn't buy us out of any kinds of problems later. We basically have to have a perfect season in order to get this really nice yield decline, I guess. It's not the way farmers would think about it, but it, it, um, there's a yield penalty when we plant late, only when we're looking at really high yielding production fields. So from a farmer's standpoint, there's a couple ways to think about it. One is if you don't have any control over the season, you don't have any control over the weather, the year, you, it probably doesn't impact you at all. You probably just want to plant as early as you can and be hopeful that you're going to have the right year at the end. On the other hand, there are farmers are big. Farmers have a lot of different fields. Farmers absolutely should be planting their highest yielding, most responsive fields first. They're the most likely to get a yield response from early planting. And those fields that never yield well for them, they should not rush, and maybe they should even delay planting on those because there's no benefit to early planting when yields are low. And there's actually, in a lot of cases, we get, if it's drought stress and things like this, if we have really uh, light textured soils, for instance, that we know are gonna be drought stressed at some time, delayed planting actually keeps the soybean a little bit short, uh, saves a little bit of water early, Use, burns up a little bit less water late in the season and actually we get better yields with later planting. So there's a, there's a tension going on there, but certainly high yielding fields, if you're really optimistic, plant them early, but if not, they can be delayed. So how yield potential is still a, a, a thing though if we talk about planting population, flowering, obviously you can't make up for plants that aren't there or flowers that aren't there. For sure. Uh, I guess I look at all of this as, from a farmer's perspective, is just set the crop up for success. Yeah. So we need to have as uh, the minimum number of plants out there needed to intercept light as early as we can. To make, basically, the soybean is, the way I look at it, is we're building a factory early on, and then during seed fill, then we're using that factory to make grain out of it. So we need to capture as much light energy as we can. And the issue in Minnesota that's amplified in, in uh, Manitoba is that early part of our season, we have really good light, but the temperatures are terrible, right? So we don't have the temperatures to get the biology going, but we have really good light energy. So figuring out how to maximize that early season light, um, we need to have quicker emergence so that we can have start accumulating um, energy in that plant. Earlier canopy uh, uh, or row closure is gonna help us. And then also utilizing the end of the season adequately. So at the end of the season is the same, a, a similar problem is that we lose light here and we're losing temperature really rapidly at the very end. So we want that plant to wrap up. And this back to the critical um, uh, period thing I talked about at the beginning, we need to get that plant through most of the seed filling stage before we get too many cold nights, cold days, cloudy days, and that plant isn't just able to finish up. So we need to, we need to be able to get that, that, that re reproductive phase in the right, time, uh, right phase of the environment. What's the take home in terms of management and, and how this should influence a farmer's management decisions? Uh, well, planting date's an easy one, and I, it's gotten a lot of attention recently. One of my colleagues is pushing for planting in the corn belt before, before corn. Um, the reality for me is, is that it's all about risk management. Uh, if you've got a day that you ca can't plant another crop, we can plant soybeans. We've done a bunch of modeling for Minnesota and just a tiny bit in Manitoba, and it, it looks like most years we get a nice, even... It's not perfect, but we tend to have an even warming up of our, of our soil and air temperature. So soybean can be planted very early with little risk of early season frost because by the time we have um, 
uh, in English units, 150 heat units. Uh, that soybean emerges, and by the time we've accumulated that much heat in the system, we tend to be out of the risk of frost. So all I'm saying is you can plant soybeans in March in many cases, and they might do okay. Uh, they'll sit there for two months, uh, but it's possible to plant soybeans very early and still have an acceptable yield. Okay, back to the, the question is um, around this uh, managing these dates that works into a farming operation. I think the reason farmers can plant soybeans very early is that it's a relatively low risk crop. It's a lower cost crop than, than corn for sure and in those areas where corn is produced. It costs less to replant soybeans, another way of thinking about it. So if you make a mistake, you can at least, uh, there's less investment on that perspective. And so utilizing field working days in the best way possible, I think it's, it's, it's possible for, for farmers to fit some early planting dates with corn in, in between corn planting or others. But it has to fit and it has to be considered as a risk management strategy and not a way to increase returns and certainly soybean prices are low and so um it's not it's I'm, I'm not i'm not suggesting farmers plant soybeans early purely on an economic perspective yeah. and i guess if we could always line up that ideal weather period with that pod filling time we would already do that from a yield perspective so it's not like we're can really do anything additional now in term now that we know that that's also critical for for minimizing stress at that time you're absolutely right. I think we built a system, you know, that works for us. And we've, the breeders have, have built a soybean for us that works, and we plant it and harvest it at the right time to, to maximize the system. But knowing a little bit about the stress just allows us maybe to push a little bit on the edges and maybe for us to understand why when we push those maturities a little bit later or when we choose an earlier maturity and try to get more out of it that we're not getting anything. And that's a good, another good point with planting data. If we're planting early, shorter season varieties that are a little bit short, if they're not using the full season, we don't get any benefit from early planting because we're not, we're not utilizing this any more of the season. We're just, we're just front loading the season just a little bit. So there's, there's mostly just tinkering around the edges. Yeah. Bonus question then, Seth. We hear about some of these super high yields, record yields in the southern U.S., and the the concept of, I'll use quotation marks here to say, stressing the crop early on to force it to tiller or, or grow multiple stems, that type of thing. What do we know in terms of research there? Uh, what does research show when it comes to early season stress on soybeans and potentially a correlation with yield? Uh, this will probably come out in my answer, but uh, I'm not a big believer in this concept at all. Uh, I don't know of any research that really supports this. There is, we've used products like Cobra or Lactofen, a herbicide that burns the soybeans. It, in certain environments, it can help support higher yields. It's not because it's stressing the plant necessarily, but it changes the architecture of the plant. So I think some of these things that farmers are doing around the edges that, that might affect the architecture, and if they can get two, two stems in an, in an area and get a few more nodes on the plant, it's possible that that could be, could be a benefit. Stress as a stress does not increase yield. Um, stress always reduces yield in some way. I think those, especially in the south, there's, the system is so long, there's so much heat, there's so much light available, they have so many other stresses that they're just probably trading one stress for the other. Um, and they're not, really, they're not really increasing anything by any of those kind of things that they're talking about. But is, and I think a lot of this, the, the origination of this, this, this thought process is that is because soybean is so plastic or elastic that it's able to respond to stress so well that it's, there's an inclination to take that one step too far and say, well, it, it accepts stress, so maybe it really likes it, right? So, anyway. And, of course, in this part of the world, our growing season's not long enough to really experiment or, or have a lot of room there. That's an excellent point. I think you're absolutely right. There's no time to delay our crop in, in Manitoba. We have, to, we have to use every single day and every single ray of sunshine and every bit of heat that we have uh, out there to get the maximum crop. And that's, I think... That's, that's your most limiting yield, and so 
have good water distribution and have good sunshine and you should get good yields. All right. Thanks for stopping by here and all the best with your presentation and uh, safe travels back from Crop Connect here in Winnipeg. Thank you. You can find more episodes of the Soybean School by going to soybeanschool.com or finding the Real Agriculture YouTube channel.